Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Cox, welcome to my shop. Today's project, we're gonna be working outdoors on that fire truck. You see that boom sitting down right there and that ladder truck right there. We had to take that extension cylinder out from that boy right there because it was leaking all over the place. And today we're gonna have a couple guys come by and um, help me out get that extension back in the boom for the truck. And hopefully it's a uh, really smooth operation. Okay guys, I'm gonna take a quick second to thank our sponsors of today's video. So Go Mo Tool sent us this 3H cordless ratchet. Now, this is a very affordable ratchet you can buy on Amazon. It's about 80 bucks for the kit. Comes with several sockets, and it's just a 12 volt plug and play. So you plug your battery in, it's good to go. Take our 14 millimeter socket out. There you go, works pretty good. Make an excellent gift for your uh, brother, your sister, your uh, <laughs> uncle that's a mechanic. Christmas is coming up. Make a fantastic stocking stuffer. Um, there'll be a link down in the description to order yours today. There's a whole bunch of Sagomo tools that you can check out. So click that link, give them a shot.
Well, I don't have a whole lot left on the fire truck. All I have to do is put the pin that holds the back of that cylinder in. Um, the snap rings that are with that, that are somewhere, I don't remember where I put them. Maybe in this bowl, maybe I left them on top of the truck so they get lost. Um, I have to do that. I have to put those water manifolds right there, those guys back on. Have to put the um, waterway clamps back on. Have to mount this egress. Um, I guess it's a stabilizer bracket, is what you'd call it. Um, all back on. It's not that much work. Still a few hours before we are able to test it. I've got a crawl up there. Um, hook up some, what, one, two, four hydraulic lines, four hydraulic lines, two electrical connections, and a partridge in a pear tree. Well, the back of our cylinder is not lined up with here. The rear pin is actually over probably about two or three inches, which means the uh, extension section up there needs to slide out a couple of inches. So um, I'm going to see if there's, if there's any easy way to get to the front of the extension slid out. Hopefully I don't have to use like a come along or anything, but uh, it's just sitting in there and it wasn't really that hard to push in. So it should go in pretty easy. So I'm installing this cotter pin. This pin is the rear pin that holds the hydraulic cylinder to the actual boom itself. The opposite end has the piston side on it, but I'm showing this because I bent the ends in a particular direction. And the reason behind it is this area can be seen and it can be accessed by people. And anytime I'm using a cotter pin or a zip tie, if you can vis visually see it without removing some panels and whatnot, then I'm always concerned that somebody's gonna get something tangled up on the really, really sharp points. The ends of these cotter pins are not razor sharp, but they'll catch on every single thing. And if you happen to be like dragging some uh, water hose, because this is a fire truck, uh, across that, I don't want anything to get snagged. So I'm bending these little legs up, and then at the very end, I take my pliers, and I roll the ends into the pin. That way, if there's ever anything in that area that's dragging across it, it's not going to get hung up and snagged on the little uh, sharp points. And you see what I'm doing right now. We're just folding it in. Now, this isn't necessary to for the safety of the cotter pin or anything. So this isn't some kind of special way to make sure the cotter pin comes out. Cotter pins are usually really foolproof. As long as you bend the ends in some sort of fashion, they won't come out. Um, but if you want to kind of dress it up, especially like this one is, is really, really easily seen from anybody that's going to be around it. And if you take a little time to do stuff like this, when people see that kind of work, they're like, oh, well, this guy takes this much time just to do this part. He must have done the rest, you know, at least as good. <laughs> well, I almost got this whole ladder truck done. Um, I got a couple of things to do. One, I got to connect this main waterway. If you can see this pipe, how it flexes down. The main water pipe, stand pipe that comes up through the bottom of the uh, fire truck comes up through here, through like a little slip joint. And then it has, this rubber seal that goes on it like this and you've got a clamp that goes around and holds the whole thing together before i put it on the bottom i need to clean it up so i'm going to use some of this uh crc parts cleaner and degreaser this stuff is awesome but make sure you don't spray it on any plastics it does have acetone in it i think and it'll uh eat plastics and no good on rubber i'm going to spray it down a little bit rough it up with that a little scotch bright clean it finish with a paper towel hook it together, then put the uh, steps back on and we should be done with the top. So whenever you have an O-ring or a rubber seal, any kind of seal, take some of this uh, Molly Coat 55 O-ring grease, put you some on there. The bigger the glide, better the job. And just rub it around on all the surfaces, make the whole thing where it's, um, you don't want to coat it like you're greasing a bearing or anything. You just want a thin coating. And what that'll do is when that clamp pushes down on it, it won't catch that rubber and pinch it like that um, which happens sometimes uh, this kind of seal has a little lip in here so make sure you get inside that lip and get that grease all over everything 
and uh, you'll have a, but a whole lot less failures when you put on a um, any kind of rubber seal or O-rings or anything. Um, generally, on O-rings, you know, you just replace when you take them off. But some applications have funny O-rings, and uh, like this one, these seals are they hardly ever go bad. And you don't have to wear gloves with this stuff at all. I just wear gloves because I don't like it all over my hands and then uh, get transferring it to everything. So you want to try to get these lined up as best as you can just so you can get them started and then once you get the nut started on the back it makes it much easier to get that seal exactly where you want it. Okay so that clamp is all the way seated and you know if you have them tight enough because like this clamp right here the two edges will actually touch. Once they touch, you're good to go. All I have left up here is to hook up this one electrical cord. Goes in this uh, junction box right here. Uh, put the step back on, and then we'll go down to the bottom and replace the switches. We start recording there's always a car coming by or a truck or an 18 wheeler see told you i can hear it okay well the whole project is done we got the extension removed we got the cylinder removed had the cylinder rebuilt i didn't get a chance to get any footage of the actual cylinder being rebuilt but we got it back from the got it back from the hydraulic shop got it installed used the crane to install everything and now i've got my uh, peanut gallery over there throwing rocks at tested it got everything done uh, another successful repair now, something about these telesquares that I've learned from uh, uh, really large manufacturers that perform service for fire trucks, this is an ex extravagantly expensive job if you take it somewhere. It's about an eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollar job if you take it to one of these huge, large companies. Now, I'm not saying that it's not worth it because those guys, when they take the stuff apart, every single piece they touch goes back brand new. That's what you're paying for. It just doesn't necessarily need to have everything replaced and brand new. Like as an example, the little plastic pads for the telescoping cylinder on this were perfectly fine. There's no sense of replacing those. Larger companies, there's not even a question of them at all. They're just gonna toss them into trash and grab, get brand new ones. I get to help out a local fire department. I made some money on a job. Came in, came in exponentially cheaper than they did. I still made a good profit on it. They got out with a fire truck that is uh, ready to go back into service. 
when I continue to get some fire apparatus jobs coming, I'm going to film them and put them up here because there's not a lot of videos on YouTube showing how these things operate uh, up underneath their skirt, you know, exactly all the mechanical nuts and bolts and everything behind it, which I think you guys would really, really appreciate according to your uh, comments in my last fire department video I made. I'll put a card up right here or here, whichever one it is. I can't remember which side it is. Um, to the last video I did showing some uh, products that we used at the fire department. But hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Leave your comments down below if you have any experience with these Telesquirt 50s or any kind of Telesquirt or snorkel product or any fire apparatus story. I love reading all the fireman stories and get out and fix something.